Hi guys, welcome to Making Sawdust. I'm Kevin, and this is Nora, and we're in the basement. This is going to be my fall 2019 basement shop tour. Stick around. For those of you that have been following along, I just went through a large move and we are in a new location, a different house, and I had to move my workshop. I really never gave you guys a full shop tour for those of you guys that have been around here, uh, but it was built completely out of pallets and it was uh, not connected to our main dwelling. And this shop is in a basement. This is a rental house and this is uh, actually where I'm going to be setting up my wood shop. So what I'm going to do is walk you guys around corner to corner to corner to corner and show you what the challenges are that I am going to be faced with setting up my shop, working in my shop while I was setting up my shop, and I'm going to show you my tools, how I use them, how I plan on using them, and that's where you guys can help me. Uh, basically my shop layout, uh, it is a pretty small footprint, but it is larger than my pallet wood shop at the old homestead. So there's some uh, benefits to this. It is a little bigger, like I said. My old shop was 13 feet by 18 feet, and I had a central table saw assembly station and also a wood stove in there. Uh, and one of those challenges was it was really hard to heat in the wintertime. I didn't have a lot of insulation, so I was really locked out of my shop for a lot of the time of the year. Darn fly. Uh, but this is in a basement. The camera is placed actually right next to a forced air furnace, which is a high efficiency, which was recently installed into this home. And uh, this footprint here is about 10 feet by 27 feet. Again, I'm going to show you some of the challenges that I'm faced with, what I've done so far, and uh, we are going to start right here. Uh, this is the stairwell that comes into the basement. This does not go up into the house. This is actually a separate door on the exterior of the house. But the entrance door for the house is only about 10 feet away, so I don't really have a long walk from the home to come down here, but I do have to go outside to get down here. This basement was built as an afterthought, so maybe some of you guys are facing some of the similar, same challenges that I am. Uh, this house was set on a slab built, I think, in the 20s or 30s, and at some point they lifted up the house and built a cement block foundation three blocks tall on top of a footer. And then they excavated underneath the underneath the home uh, and have recently installed a forced air furnace and a new water heater. So we have dirt walls and dirt floor. So those are a few of the challenges right there. It really decreases the footprint. One of the benefits of this shop actually it is bone dry. Uh, there is no water infiltration. It's not the walls aren't moist. It's a mix of bentonite clay and sand, so they're really super hard. Uh, so it's supporting the house really good. Uh, this is not going to be our lifelong residence. We're in a kind of a transition period, uh, but we probably will be here a couple years because we like the area, and uh, it really supports a local craft market for us, which. That's how I support the household is my woodworking and I don't have an outside job. So this is really the move from the homestead to this rental house into an urban area was really beneficial for us so I could really start to establish a woodworking market. We're going to start right here. This is where I installed my vise. This is a four laminated uh, two by eights. Super solid, it goes directly to a cement slab that's basically supporting this stairwell right here. So it's nice and solid, it seemed like the best area to do that. Uh, you want to have a lot of support underneath your vise when you're, 
you're hammering on, hammering on stuff for like on the anvil side of the vise. The next thing we did when I first moved in, there was just a bunch of stuff down here. Uh, there was an old water heater, there was a countertop, there was a sink, there was some just garbage that remnants from the last tenant. Uh, we didn't have any electric down here at all except for the circuit that ran the, the water heater in the furnace. And there was two incandescent light bulb fixtures, so it was really, really dim down here. So one of the first things we had to do uh, is install another circuit. And that was a bit of a challenge, or an older electric panel, and we actually had to kind of expand that. So we added a 20 amp circuit, and we jumped off another 15 amp circuit to provide lighting. So all of my tools run off a 20 amp circuit. They're all 110 volt tools. And then we needed to basically have a place to start. I needed to build a bench for my miter saw. And that is located right over here and I'll take you this way and continue. So this is my miter station. This was built out of two by three construction material. Uh, real quick and dirty, uh, but very stable and solid at this point. I'd like to do a lot more organization and build some cabinets or some slide out trays or something convenient down underneath there. Uh, so this is going to be another full video on how I built this and actually how I finish it up too. Uh, this is actually a perfect height for me. This is about 42 inches tall, maybe 44, I can't remember exactly, but it's a great height. Uh, initially, my miter station was a little lower at my old shop, and this is so much more comfortable. I am six foot two, and it is it's really comfortable using my miter saw at this height. I also, when I built my infeed and my outfeed for my miter station, I left the fronts open, and that's actually served a really good purpose. I can stash my screws and stash my drill bits and, and screwdriver bits and all that stuff right underneath the front. So I do have a thought that's possibly good to have drawers that slide out underneath and uh, it would be great for you guys to help me out with your ideas there. And moving along to the other side, you can see again, it is a really good height for me. Uh, this is pretty much my main workstation at this point. One of the challenges that I had had at my old place is my workbench was to the right side of my miter station, which provided a great place for the outfeed, but I always had stuff on the workbench. So having the open front on these outfeed and infeed tables is really, really convenient to kind of stash my stuff. There's no back on them, so I can basically blow the dust right through there. One thing that you're probably noticing is the dirt wall behind here. You can probably see the cement ledge, which is the footing, and then dirt behind it. So what we did is actually built this bench over top of, a, it's kind of a makeshift retaining wall uh, that was holding some of that dirt back. Um, wasn't the greatest structurally, uh, but we beefened it up and it actually has increased, or not increased the footprint, but hasn't decreased the footprint as much as it would have if we built the miter station from that dirt retaining wall out. As you can see, there's a couple fence posts that are holding back a piece of plywood, which is actually holding back some eroded dirt. These dirt walls, like I said, are really, really solid. Uh, this piece of plywood is actually holding back a little bit of dirt. That's really my next phase of this basement is continuing this melamine countertop and building 16 feet of melamine all the way down and actually building it up over the top of this piece of plywood. Uh, I'm going to have it at the same height here. So I'll cut this plywood down so I can put about one foot of that melamine behind. Now, again, that helps me 
not decrease my footprint as much. And I also want to be able to use this upper area for some storage. So you guys can help me out with that too. Kind of getting creative and building in maybe some cabinets or some shelves or some lumber storage. Obviously there is some lumber already up here. And we'll continue down this wall. I'll turn the camera around and, and that can really illustrate the footprint a little better for you guys. So I'm actually standing where I would continue this bench now. And I have two more pieces of melamine back here. And my plan is to have a perimeter workstation all the way around here. I have a planer, a lunchbox style planer. I have an older radial arm saw, uh, obviously my miter saw, a table saw, and also a shopsmith. So my plan was to do more of a perimeter type working area, uh, with the exception of the table saw. And you guys can give me some ideas when we get down there. Like I said here, uh, dirt right here, and the cement actually starts right back here, which is supporting my block foundation here. So I want to be able to use this area up here for storage, but I also need to be able to reach it. So with that thought of building that bench over top of this makeshift retaining wall, uh, that was really going to help me out. Uh, again, like I said, this is a rental. So I really can't do a ton of modifications. I'm probably not going to move my benches when I move but I do need to have a working shop and a, an efficient shop. I get all kinds of projects coming through here and I need to have, a, again, like I said, in a very efficient shop. So I need to be able to reach some of my storage area. This is lumber is just kind of thrown up here higgledy-piggledy because I didn't want it out in the weather. So we'll just continue on. What I have here is just a couple couple saw horses set up right now two pieces of plywood that were down here and this is really my bench uh, at this point a couple of my finished products that I need to take upstairs I build these horseshoe coat racks two different styles right now uh, it's elevated dog feeders you can obviously see a stack of them right here butcher block cutting boards and I also do some finer work some small work like these boxes right here that I sell. But again, I need to be able to access this storage up here and have a working bench. I don't like bending over to work on a bench, so actually this is really way too low for me. So I like to have an elevated bench, again, for my radial arm saw and my lunchbox planer somewhere on this side here. Uh, integrate my lunchbox planer into the bench in such a fashion it has an, an outfeed table, an infeed table, the bench being used as that. So we'll just continue on and then we'll talk a little bit more about each particular tool I have. So this is where my table saw ended up landing, right here. Um, I actually backfilled this floor a little bit because it was super uneven. And you can see right here, this is one of these makeshift retaining walls. There's about three feet of space behind it. So this area is really underutilized at this point. Uh, so I'm thinking of cabinets, benches, storage, something like that. A lot of these items were just moved so I could get, you know, get working in my shop. I can't find a lot of things still. Uh, I love coffee cans. They are great storage, uh, great ways to store stuff. And usually I label them, but in the move, not everything got labeled. I want to be able to have <clears throat> an assembly bench too. Back here, another about a three foot shelf of dirt, uh, which really, makes my footprint so much shorter. I guess there's an option of excavating some of this dirt and hauling it out, but I don't have a place to put it, really. Uh, so 
just a lot of stuff. That's kind of my garden area right here. And then moving around, I'll move the camera so you guys can see the rest of this. Please don't pay attention to some of the graffiti that was here. Uh, obviously it was here. Uh, this was actually labeled as the dungeon. Uh, coming downstairs, it's spray painted on the wall, dungeon. Uh, kind of creepy for me. Uh, this, some of this graffiti is going to get painted over. This is actually the front of our house right here. And kind of a makeshift retaining wall right here. Uh, I'm going to kind of fix this up a little bit and see what we can go. See how we can go from there. This is the main water supply coming into the house. So my water meter is right here. This pallet is actually supported by a couple fence posts and the water meter is right up against the pallet attached to it. So uh, I'm probably going to leave that. It's kind of a temporary wall, but it also protects, you know, me banging into the copper pipe and springing a leak. A lot of this back here is storage. I'll just grab my camera and show you. A really good head height right here. Like I said, I'm six foot two and the bottom of the floor joists are oh just shy of seven feet. There's really not a problem there. A lot of scrap lumber I have right here. Trash can obviously. More scrap lumber. Some tools. Uh, some tools. And this is Looking back the other way to really give you guys an idea of where we just were. Again, you can see a couple makeshift retaining walls. Uh, I want to really utilize this area a lot better that's behind the furnace and the water heater. So guys, this was the lunchbox planer I was talking about. Uh, there's a Win 6550 or 6552 uh, that I use, and I've used it for almost three years. Never really had a problem with it. It had a little bit of snipe. But I made an outfeed infeed table for it and it really took a lot of that away. So I want to be able to use this. I don't want it sitting on the floor. Uh, I want it on a bench with a dedicated infeed outfeed. So that's where I was. So I was going to put it over on my new benches that I get built so I can just walk up to it and use it. And this is my shopsmith. I picked, the, picked up this guy at a garage sale for 150 bucks. It was basically just a table saw. Didn't have a drill chuck, didn't have a tail stock or anything. So it was basically a saw arbor on a shopsmith. Uh, what I ended up doing is I made, I made a drum sander out of it. adjustable adjustable bed with a 3 16 threaded screw with a homemade knob on it cardboard tube with uh, sandpaper I made my own arbors basically made my own bearing assembly and made my own tailstock certainly I'm gonna make a whole video of how I did that and how it works it's really not even finished 
but I've put probably about a million miles on this thing uh, for it not even being finished. But it had to be a working unit. I was building quite a few cutting boards at the time, so I had to make something work. And uh, it's going to be a dedicated machine either for a, a drum sander, thicknesser, and I probably want to use it as a lathe at some point. Like I said, I want to use it as a lathe at some point. I actually cast an aluminum faceplate out of uh, pop cans using homemade foundry. And I'm going to end up machining this to make a faceplate so I can start turning some bowls and, and other types of things. And, and, you know, I just hate spending money. So uh, sometimes there's just not any money to go around. So really, that's why I cast a faceplate so I could use that. I just have not got back to it yet, but soon. Everything's pretty much a work in progress. Uh, the other thing I use my shopsmith for is a router table. So I use basically the table saw bench that came with the shopsmith and put it on the end of my shopsmith and I have my quarter cable router mounted in it. This is basically my router table here. I use this right here to, right now it's set up to, to cut the circles out of my elevated dog feeders. It's just a, a simple plywood jig that I made and I came up with. I do have another router that I will use as a handheld router. And I also have a Dremel that I can use as a kind of a small trim router, which is quite helpful. So I'd love to hear your ideas about placement of a lot of my tools. I just want to let you know that, you know, you don't need all the expensive stuff. It's nice having some expensive tools because uh, you can increase safety, efficiency, accuracy, and things like that. But I only have two tools in this shop that I bought brand new. And that is my Skill 3410 and its wind planer right here. Garage Sale Shopsmith, Barn Find Radial Arm Saw, which I'll take you upstairs and show you that. Miter Saw was a garage sale find. Uh, and pretty much every other tool and accessory I have in here has been purchased used. Porter Cable Router, my Powercraft Router back there that I didn't show you guys. And... Uh, Heck, every toolbox I own in here is used. So, fine craftsmanship is really about the craftsman, not about the tool. Uh, just wanted to let you know that you can, I if I can inspire you to use what you have, not what you ain't. If I can inspire you and motivate you to, you know, buy garage sale tools and, you know, make sure they're operational and safe, of course. Uh, you can do it guys and you don't need a fancy saw stop to uh, create fine things you just have to be a fine craftsman so let me take you upstairs I'll finish up the rest of this tour I'll take you upstairs and show you where I hoard all my wood we started guys with my vise my miter bench miter saw station one thing I did not show you is my drill press and actually a challenge I faced about placing my drill press. As you can see, this is the, the main soil pipe coming from the upstairs. There was no way that I could disturb that. And there was also, you see that two by four beam right behind the drill press. I figured it was probably a really good location for the drill press. What my friend and I did is we built a cradle that went over the top and near my shop dog, went over the top of the soil pipe so we didn't have any pressure and any, any weight on the sewer pipe at all. I have a couple toolboxes, tool bag, 
in a car catalog cabinet from an old library that I only used for probably some tool storage. This drill press was actually given to me, so you don't need to buy all the fancy stuff if you can surf Craigslist or Kijiji or uh, Facebook Marketplace. You really can do a lot with decent tools or low budget tools. So this is uh, the basement dungeon tour of the work in progress woodshop, guys. Uh, I really would love your thoughts, love your ideas, love your feedback. Maybe you guys are in a similar situation. Uh, maybe you want to set up your shop and don't think you ha you can do it because there's it's too creepy and you got a lot of cobwebs. Well, I want to be some inspiration to you guys. So let's go upstairs and I'll show you where I hide all my wood. So guys, this is my eight foot tall, four foot wide, and ten feet long storage shed. That's where I hoard my lumber. Let's go. But we can't go completely inside because she's kind of kind of chock full. We got a lot of hemlock. Southern yellow pine, a little bit of hardwood on the right hand side. Uh, I think that's a piece of birch. Yeah, that's some birch right up there. Got some uh, smashed aluminum cans. My tool belt. A uh, nice little cabinet in the back that uh, has a lot of my aerosols and things like that. And uh, almost a small little loft. With a bunch of lumber up there, too. Uh, there's a stack of five gallon buckets in the back there that have a ton of wood scraps in it. This left side right here is a couple pieces of barn wood right there, a couple pieces of oak veneer plywood, and again, the rest of that is all hardwood there, some birch, a little bit of maple, and a couple sticks of walnut. So, works out pretty good. I have a project hiding under the tarp right there that has been two years in the making. It probably would only take about an hour and a half to finish up. So hopefully that's a future video. One thing I did not mention is dust collection and air filtration, guys. I have an old air conditioner down there that does not work, doesn't cool anymore. So I'm thinking about taking out the fan on the back side. It's a pretty big fan and using it as an exhaust fan slash air filtration unit. So guys, I really appreciate the time you've spent with me on this shop tour 2019 fall basement. Use what you got, not what you ain't. Help me set up my shop shop tour. I know that's going to a crazy long title, but you've already watched this far into it. And obviously the video probably isn't even titled that anyway. I want to invite you over to my Facebook page and my social media and all that. Those links will be down in the description. I've also self-built my own woodworking website where I'll be doing a lot of blogging, uh, tools, tips and tricks, uh, plans will be available, items for sale, things like that. Making sawdust, I want to be able to inspire you, motivate you, create some curiosity, uh, involve you. I like the engagement, I like the relationships with people. So. I invite you to stick around, click subscribe, hit that like if you really like this, share this with your friends, and tell me what your guy's shop looks like. Uh, give me your feedback on what you think, how I can set this up a little more efficiently, my benches, my storage, 
creative creative ideas that you guys have I would love to hear those and stay tuned for future videos on my miter saw station coat racks elevated dog feeders walnut boxes shop smith as I get ready to use it as a lathe I'll show you how I use my drum sander all kinds of stuff I want to make some safety videos for for some new woodworkers and again share your ideas with me let me know what you think how you think I should do it what you have found that was successful in your basement shop and uh, let's all get out in the shop and make some sawdust <laughs>